Hey, it's Erin from One Stop Trail Shop, and today we're going to be talking about resupplying, a general overview of your options, where they are on the trail, and what they have to offer. We're also going to look at itineraries I've created that are tailored specifically to your pace. All right, here we have the John Muir Trail. This map I created and you can get at the link in the description of this video. So up here we have the northern terminus, Yosemite Valley, and down here the southern terminus at Whitney Portal, which is a bit different from where the trail officially ends at the peak of Mount Whitney. There is an additional 10 miles to get back to where you exit the trail. Okay. So speaking of resupplies, if you're going to be flying in or sending yourself a package for any other reason, these two terminuses, termini, both have post offices, both in Lone Pine and in Yosemite Valley, so you can send yourself your initial package. Some things to notice about the trail in general is if we were to cut it in half, more of the resupply options are on the northern end. On the southern end, we basically have two options. We have Parcher's Resort, which requires a significant hike. This is also listed here. Parcher's Resort is about 12 miles out. Or we have the town of Independence. Independence has a post office and it also has a place called Mount Williamson Motel that caters to through hikers. So those are your two options for the southern part of the trail, and they both require hikes off. And even though you need to hike off trail, they're still totally reachable, and you'll need to incorporate that into your overall mileage. We'll get to that when we talk about itineraries. Okay, let's just start by looking at them. First up, from the north, we have Twelve New Meadows. If you want to find the details, follow the link. All right, so this one is right on trail, which is great, and they have a grill. It's always nice to get prepared food while you're on trail. It's a post office, so you don't need to pay anything beyond the postal fee to get your box or bucket there. And you can find the details about hours and miles along the trail. If you forgot something and you realize that early on, there is a store as well. I remember buying a hat here because the hat I brought was just no good. Okay, after Tuolumne Meadows, we reach Mammoth. Let's follow that link. Mammoth has an on-trail resort called Red's Meadow Resort. They have a place called Mule House Cafe with prepared food. There's things like lodging, doing your laundry, you can take a shower, and you can camp there. So this is a great stop and you are also very close to the town of Mammoth if you need to go into town for anything at all. There is a $40 fee in addition to postal charges. We have other details here like how to send your package and they do have a specific form that you need to fill out to doing so. All right, that was Red's Meadow. After Red's Meadow, we continue down the trail and this one requires a small off trail about a mile and then you can catch a ferry either in the morning or in the evening details are on the site and this is called vermilion valley resort let's check that one out all right vvr is really wonderful they have just a really great atmosphere and they have really good food but your tab can rack up really quickly, so fair warning. Here, it gives you details about how to send it, um, details about what is available. This place too, you can do laundry, you can get a bed if you really want to or if they're available. Um, and because of other places that are close to resupply, this might not be a resupply point, but it will likely be a detour. Um, just a place maybe to take a zero, which is what they call a day when you don't hike at all, or you cover zero miles. There's links to everything you need from them. All right. 
So once you've had your zero day at VVR, as they call it, you continue down the trail and about almost exactly at the halfway point, we have Muir Trail Ranch. Let's explore Muir Trail Ranch. This one is also very close on the trail. I think you hike off less than a mile. They do have a pretty steep fee, $95, to get your resupply here. There's some things like there's hot springs close by. They do have a small store if you need fuel or small items like that. All the details are here with their hours. They don't have prepared food. This place is more going to be just grab your stuff and continue along the trail. All right, now we're into the southern section, about a hundred mile blank spot when it comes to having a, a resupply point right on the trail. So the main one that I've included first is over Bishop Pass, going over to Parcher's Resort. At Parcher's Resort, you can also send resupply boxes for $30. They have places where you can find lodging and a cafe. It's not a full restaurant, but they do have drinks and pastries and microwavable food. All the details are here about where to send and when to send. Something important to note is this significant hike out. So it's 12 miles one way, meaning overall you're adding 24 miles to your trip. That's going to affect your resupply beforehand as well as your resupply after. All right, we continue down the trail and down here at Kearsarge Pass, which is about seven miles, you can see it right here, to a trailhead called Onion Valley Trailhead. Then you'll need to either hitchhike or the place down here called Mount Williamson Motel and Base Camp they offer packages that do include transportation. So, to look at what they have, let's follow this link. They also have, like I said, transportation. They'll hold your resupply. You can do laundry, you can get hot breakfast. And they also have packages specifically for through hikers that include all of these things, whether it's for one night, I think they have a one night one. And depending on how many people you have, you can get a room. They have deals thinking of JMT hikers specifically. Maybe you don't want to stay overnight and you just want to stay on the trail. They'll take you from the trail and back to the trail in the same day if that's what you want to plan. Okay, so those are all of our resupplies. Again, it's Tuolumne Meadows, Red's Meadow, Vermilion Valley Resort, Muir Trail Ranch, Parcher's Resort, and Mount Williamson Motel. One thing I did forget to mention is that if you don't want to do have anything to do with Mount Williamson Motel, you can also do this same hike, get into town, and send your resupply just to the post office, which is in town. That Those details are also here. The one thing with post offices that you want to always keep in mind is oftentimes they're closed on Sunday. So, let's see. This one is closed on Saturday and Sunday, so those details can be found at that link. Okay, so simple enough. We see what our resupply options are. Now, how can we figure out when we'll be getting there or how, many, how much food we need to carry in between? So here's a tool that you can also get at the link in the description, and this are ideal itineraries that I've created. Now, let's, let me explain these different columns to you. So, there's the true mileage, the official start point, and what mile each of these are at on the official John Muir Trail map. Now, things start to change because of those side hikes that I mentioned. So, all of these numbers include those side hikes, the true mileage. And depending on your speed, you might be doing both of those. You might be hiking off trail departures resort and to Mount Williamson Motel, or maybe just Mount Williamson Motel. So just to let you know what these numbers mean, they are adjusted mileage for those side hikes. Okay, so here we have southbound, 
and northbound, depending on which permit you get or just your preference. Okay, one other thing to talk about is our daily mileage. We're not gonna hike the exact amount every single day, but it is important to establish a mileage in order to send yourself resupplies. So let's say you're going to average 11 miles per day. What you'll do is over here at 11 miles per day, southbound, click this little plus sign here, and let's break down what this means. Okay, we have our days, our true mileage, which is what I was talking about up here, adjusted for those side hikes, and our resupply points. So at 11 miles per day, from what I have looked at, you only need to be doing one off-trail resupply to Mount Williamson Motel, and that is why this is yellow. For example, maybe you have a little bit of a slower pace and you'll be going nine miles a day. In that case, you'll need to go over both side resupplies, and that is why it is reflective in green. Okay, back to 11 miles. We have our day that we've been hiking, our true mileage, and our resupply point. So at 11 miles per day, on day six, we will reach Red's Meadow. It, it's at mile 60, and we could potentially get farther that day. So maybe we resupply and hike a bit farther. Leg two is four days until we hit mile 110, and we're able to reach Mirror Trail Ranch. In here, you can throw in a zero. That's not gonna affect how much food you need to carry because there will be food for you to purchase there. Then we have a seven day leg. I don't have anything beyond seven. Seven days is a lot of food. You will probably have to do some intense packing in your bear can to get that to fit. That's a future video. And here's our resupply point there. And then our last leg gets us all the way out to Whitney Portal. You'll notice that the mileage is farther than the true mileage of the trail. And that's because the summit is the end of the trail technically. And then you need to get all the way out to Whitney Portal. So that ends up being 234 miles if you just hike out to Mount Williamson Motel over Kearsarge Pass. They're not always exact. And because... Some days you're going to go a little lighter, other days you're going to push yourself on those miles. Alright, so the same goes for each of these, and they have different resupply points. These are This is not your only option, but from what I have looked at, this is what I think is the best option, and you can always make changes. You can copy this pay, this sheet and make it your own. Let's take a peek at northbound. Northbound, something to note, what is this negative 10? So that's because where you start hiking is 10 miles shy of the official start. So when you get to the summit, you've already covered 10 miles. So again, these are adjusted to reflect things like that. The side hikes, as well as the fact that we start 10 miles shy of the terminus. The same thing, you put the drop down, and you can see what I think is the best itinerary for that speed, where to stop, and how much you will carry during that leg. <sighs> yep, I know, it's a lot, but we're easing you in. Watch this as many times as you need, explore the links, see what your resupply options are, and start throwing together a training plan to try and get to the point where you can fit your trip into your schedule. I hope these tools are helpful to you. Make sure you sign up for my newsletter because I'm creating new things all the time. And in case you're wondering, yes, I will be offering resupply packages myself. So stay tuned and know that you'll be able to rely on One Stop Trail Shop for all your John Muir Trail and resupply needs. All right, have a great weekend. Bye.